Shalom, everyone. In the Nazarim, that's what we're called. There's something for the masses to see, and then there's something for the initiated to see. It's the darkness hiding in open view. We call them Wiccans, witches, warlocks, wizards, shamans. That's what they go by. It's poison doctrine. I can't believe I did that. So I want to invite Yahusha to, to be with us and, and guide us into all the truth. And today's uh, topic is going to be, my name is Lou White, by the way. I'm sorry for not t saying so. But, uh, we want to um, begin by um, remembering that all of us have a little story of our own about persecution. And persecution is something that's going to, it's actually the price that we all pay for being a follower of <coughs> Yahusha. Yahusha is actually the one that was persecuted and has been pursued in his bride even before he came to the earth. I mean, Israel was his chosen wife, and the dragon has been pursuing the woman. and. And, and of course the body, you know, of Yahusha. And he's the head, so he's obviously been persecuted, we all know this, and now he's being persecuted still in us, because when we're persecuted, then he is also persecuted. But he has overcome the world, you know. Now, in this seminar, we're gonna deal with some topical uh, items here uh, that people have been programmed with. A traditional terminology, is going to be not used. We're going to not use the word Lord. We're going to use his real name because, see, they replaced his name in the translations, and that's a tradition of men. Uh, the, the definition of B-A-A-L in the di dictionary is actually Lord, but his real name is Yahuwah. See, B-A-A-L is, uh, is not our shepherd. <laughs> So anyway, uh, J-E-S-U-S -S is a, a recent thing. Under, it's not even 500 years old, this, this word. His real name, Yahusha, or Yahushua, and sometimes shortened to Yeshua. That's what his name really is. Uh, Mashiach is the Hebrew word, not Greek. We don't really need Greek if we can just go straight to the Hebrew. Now, uh, we don't use the term G-O-D because that's the Norse deities. Those are from Norse deities, and it was adopted. And... Uh, as adopted children of Yahuwah, we don't use adopted things from pagan sources. The word is El or Elohim. It means strength or strong one, mighty one. And uh, remember the uh, term Jews is a, is a slight corruption of the original word Yahudim. And that's a plural ending. A Yahudi would be one. And that's one tribe, the royal tribe. And we're going to call ourselves by the term Nazarim which is a plural form of not sir, or not sorry, and it means watchmen or guardians. And we watch carefully over the name and the word, the covenant. Uh, the word Christian is actually a Greek term. And Yisrael is the, all the tribes of, of Yisrael, including you know, Reuben, Ephraim, Zebulon, all of them. And the Nazarim are branches also as being descendants of the teachings of the founder of the sect of the Nazarene, Acts 24, verse 5. And we are a sect, and we were established as the first followers of Yahusha, and we're referenced also not only in Acts 24, verse 5, but in, in Acts 28 as a sect, and it was persecuted. It's a persecuted sect, and it's, it was spoken badly of. This is the retelling of the, of the covenant for the lost tribes, or the scattered tribes, in the last days. Now, this is an identification of the one that we serve. He said to go and teach the nations and immerse them in his name and to teach them to, and to guard all that he had commanded us. And this is what he commanded us to obey. So the name, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. You have no other mighty ones against my face. Number two is you do not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers on the children, upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing kindness to thousands to those who love me and guard my commands. Number three. 
you do not cast the name of Yahuwah your Elohim to ruin, for Yahuwah does not leave him unpunished who casts his name to ruin. Now, number four, guard the Sabbath day to set it apart as Yahuwah your Elohim <laughs> commanded you. Six days you labor and shall do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahuwah your Elohim. You do not do any work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant nor your ox nor your donkey nor any of your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates so that your male servant and your female servant rest as you do. And you shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Mitzrayim and that Yahuwah your Elohim brought you out from there by a strong hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore Yahuwah your Elohim commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Number five, respect your father and your mother as Yahuwah your Elohim has commanded you so that your days are prolonged and that it is well with you on the soil which Yahuwah your Elohim has given you. Number six, you do not murder. Number seven, you do not break wedlock. Number eight, you do not steal. Number nine, you do not bear false witness against your neighbor. And number 10, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, nor do you desire your neighbor's house, his field, nor his male servant, nor his female servant, his ox, nor his donkey, or whatever belongs to your neighbor. Now, this is the Shema, this, this hear and obey. Shema is the word for hear. Hear, O Yisrael. Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your being, with all your might. And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. And you shall impress them upon your children and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up and shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Now, those are uh, not something we want to overlook. And in Proverbs 7, it says, My son, guard my words. That's what he's talking about, we just mentioned. And treasure up my commands with you. Guard my commands and live, and my Torah as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablet of your heart. So his commands, or his word, actually will remain forever. Okay, so persecution is a, a thing that we actually have to pay. It's a price that we pay for being his follower. And uh, Yahuwah sees how we treat one another, too. You know, we can mistreat each other. In Psalm 35, starting at verse 11, it says, Ruthless witnesses rise up, and they ask me that which I knew not. They reward me evil for good, bereaving my life. But, but when they were sick, I put on sackcloth. I humble my being with fastings, and my prayer would, would return to my own bosom. I walked about as though he were my friend or brother. I bowed down in mourning as one mourning for a mother. But they rejoiced at my stumbling and gathered together. The smiters gathered against me, and I did not know it. They tore in pieces without ceasing, with unclean ones, mockers at feasts, gnashing at me with their teeth. Yahuwah, how long would you look on? Rescue my being from their destructions, my only life from the lions. I give you thanks in the great assembly. I praise you among a mighty people. Let not my lying enemies rejoice over me, or those who hate me without cause wink their eyes. For they do not speak peace, but they devise words of deceit against the peaceable ones of the land. And they open their mouth wide against me. They said, Aha, our eyes have seen it. This you have seen, O Yahuwah. Do not be silent. O Yahuwah, do not be far from me. So we can all relate to that. Now, uh, Yahuwah said, anyone who touches you is touching the apple of my eye. So he knows that we're persecuted. And uh, we have to realize that love overcomes hate, just as light overcomes darkness. Because darkness is nothing. Light is something. Evil and hatred are lacking. They don't have the love. See, without love, there's nothing there. So to persecute one of us is to persecute Yahusha, the creator. The Hebrew word most used for persecution is radaf. Pursue, hunt, chase with hostile intent. So we don't act like that. That's not the way we behave. 
we're, uh, we're to be known for the love that we have for one another, foremost. Because that's what the, the covenant that we just read teaches us. It programs us with a, the understanding of how to love. It's, it's not the words themselves that we obey as a result. I mean, uh, they're not the things that, that, that actually save us, but it's the evidence of those words lived out that is the evidence of our salvation. We're not trying to obey them in order to be saved. That's, that's just incorrect. But a consequence of being a true follower of Yahushua will be, and always will be, persecution. It'll never be overcome. You, you just have to pray for your enemies. And when you pray for your enemies, what that does is it puts the armor on you. Because the demons don't come near someone who's in communication with their creator. And call on his name. Call him Father. Call him Yahuwah. Call him Yahusha. Because you're to speak to the Father in his name. Now, persecution refines us, and it purifies us, and it enhances and improves us. And in, in receiving persecution, we actually share in the persecution and suffering of Yahusha. And because he is being persecuted through our own bodies and minds. Now, Israel is Yahuwah's persecuted bride, and it has always been so. She has been enslaved and pursued by a pharaoh. It says in, what was that book? Uh, it says that they were in the, in the land of Mitzrayim enslaved for 400 years. But he said that he was going to punish them for that, the Mitzrayim, Mitzrayimians. They were plotted against by a Haman to utterly wipe them out from the face of the earth. They were driven into the nations by Assyria. They were taken away into captivity for 70 years by the Babylonians. They were traumatized by the Greeks. They were dominated over by Romans. They were expelled from Spain in 1492. They were burned out by inquisitions and pogroms. They were systematically executed on an industrial scale by the Nazis. They were accused of conspiracies hatched by the Jesuits in the protocols of the elders of Zion. Of Zion. And now regathered by the United Nations for extermination by Islamist nations. That's why they're in the land. The Orthodox know this. They say, we're regathered, but we're not supposed to be because it's Yahuwah that has to regather us. And that's a, an amazing fact. Now, here's how to overcome persecution. Every one of you feels it in your families, in your friends, in your previous worship partners. We overcome it with love and compassion and, of course, constant prayer. That's the armor you know, that we put on. At 1 Timothy chapter 1, Paul stated that he was the chief of sinners because he once persecuted Yahushua by persecuting his followers. Yahushua told us, I will never leave you. And he also said, I am with you always, even to the end of days. This is why we can endure the pain, because he is with us. This is why the two spies were so different from the other ten spies. They knew that he was with them. In other words, when the ten spies looked at the giants, they said, uh oh. And when the two spies looked at the giants, they said, let's see, there's us plus Yahuwah. Bad news for them. <laughs> this is why we can overcome and find joy in persecution and share in Yahushua's sufferings because we are shattered by his love. And we reflect his love to others. And he lives in us. That's why we can do it. Because he's overcome the world. Now, if we fear, though, then we are showing that we do not really believe that he is with us. So Deuteronomy 31, verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For it is Yahuwah, your Elohim, who is going with you. He does not fail you or nor forsake you. And Genesis 28 also says, And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. And that was being spoken to Yaakov uh, as he did to Abram. 
Now in Matthew 28, Yahushua also said, therefore go and make taught ones of all the nations, immersing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the set-apart spirit, teaching them to guard all that I have commanded you. And see, I am with you always until the end of the age. Amen. And Emmanuel means Elohim is with us. Now, um, interestingly enough, when we, when we understand that he is with us, then we can be strong and courageous like the two spies that gave a good report. You know, we have nothing to fear. Now, we must encourage one another. That's part of the reason that we get together, to, to receive education and encouragement. Because there's some people that are going to be viewing this that are going to be going through something. Either they're going through it now, or they have gone through it, or they're going to go through it, and it's never going to stop. There's always going to be a new wave of persecution. In Acts 14.22, it says, strengthening the beings of the taught ones, encouraging them to continue in the belief, and that through many pressures we have to enter the reign of Elohim. Now, I want to mention something that might be interpreted as political, but I want, to see, I want you to understand this. When I pray, I also try to include all of the, the deaths of the unborn throughout all time. And that's a pretty large number. Because in just, uh, just in our country alone, there's an attack that's actually a genocide that's going on. And I, the, the genocide is a racial attack, usually. It's a, something that's either racial or religious, but it, 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 it basically seeks out one population of people, like the Yahudim. But in this case, they're not attacking the Yahudim, they're attacking another group. Now, a silent genocide is taking place right now. And the painful slaughter of the innocents going on since just 1973, 56 million people have been killed in the womb. And it is a holocaust in the United States, but it's going on worldwide. In the USA, 23% of all pregnancies, that's almost a fourth, end in abortion. And in 25 years, well, let me just say this, worldwide, approximately 40 million are killed each year. 40 million, and in 25 years, it's about a billion people that are wiped out. A billion people. And Yahuwah will act. But I, I want to refine what I'm going to point out here a little bit more. This started by the devaluation of human life. Now, human life is made in the image of Yahuwah. And for that reason, the adversary wants to destroy people as much as he can. In 1859, the uh, book Origin of Species, which is the shortened title, uh, came out, written by Charles Darwin. Now, the full title is On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection or the Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. Now, they really want to wiggle around on that, but this is a racial interpreted book. And the logical conclusion on this perspective is that human beings need management, and we need to manage them by means of natural selection. And the communists used this philosophy of management by economic impl implementation. That's how they implemented the teachings from this book. And the uh, Nazis used eugenics. And it's a reproduction control and elimination of undesirable traits by extermination. And that is sometimes by limiting their reproductive capacity or uh, sterilizing them or just outright killing them before they even get born or even after they're born. You know, the people that went to Australia, for example, were systematically uh, ex exterminating the Aborigines. And the Aborigines are probably the purest, or among them and, uh, and other races, are probably more closely pure to the original peoples. They are, they're first peoples. You know, the image of Yahuwah is more closely seen in the first peoples, you know? Now, eugenics is actually an organi organized attempt to manage population and the, the reproductive capacities and making sure that everybody is healthy and eliminating the people that are not healthy. Um, and examples are Nazi, Nazi Germany, China's limitation on children, and the group, the uh, global eugenics organization that everybody 
probably has heard of, called Planned Parenthood. They're a global, you know. Now I'm gonna just, one more frame and then we'll leave this. This is persecution. Abortion is persecution and it's genocide by another name. Uh, and oddly enough, the very people who are the target of this are voting people to be leaders over us that are exterminating them. It's amazing. This fellow, uh, Martin Luther, was a Republican. A lot of people don't know that. But back in the 60s, when he was trying to get the, the black people um, more civil rights, uh, the Democrats were the ones that were fighting against it. <laughs> and, and yet, it's so backwards. Anyway, white women had the lowest, have had the lowest abortion rates, uh, 8.5 abortions per 1,000. And they put these abortion clinics in the black neighborhoods, okay? Because that's where their customers are. It's an intentional f act. Now, in contrast, black women had the highest abortion rates by far, 32.1 abortions per 1,000 women. Now that's the women that, that, uh, that includes the women that are using protection and not getting pregnant. But look at the ratio of pregnancies though. 480 abortions per 1,000 live births. That's 20 away from half, okay? Now that's all I wanted to show you about that, but it's not good. It's persecution. Now the dragon, who is our enemy, is not flesh and blood. This is a systematic implementation of empowering the forces of evil, you know. Ephesians 6, starting at verse 11 says, put on the complete armor of Elohim for you to have power to stand against the schemes of the devil. And I just showed you a really powerful scheme of the devil to destroy people. Because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against authorities, against the world rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual matters of wickedness in the heavenlies. And if we're praying at all times, then you're wearing the armor. If you just read the verse, it's Ephesians 6. Anyway, I, I don't want to go back to that other subject anymore. It's pretty distressing. But uh, anyway, those who would distress us must face a very powerful distressor. Now, if you're being persecuted, he knows it. If you're persecuting one another or you're persecuted from some force outside of us, out of us, he knows. Exodus 23, 22 says, but if you diligently obey his voice and shall do all that I speak, then I shall be an enemy to your enemies and a distresser to those who distress you. And this is a little picture of a meeting between Benjamin Netanyahu and, and, and Obama. And in his book, The Audacity of Hope, he's quoted as saying, when the ill winds blow, I will always stand with the Muslims. Okay, I'm glad I didn't write that. Now in the face of stress and pressure, be strong. Uh, there's a man named Bob Proctor, who I wanna quote a little part of his essay on resistance. He says, no person or ideal or institution becomes great until great resistance has been encountered. Greatness cannot be achieved until this concept is understood. Stand tall in the face of your enemy. Yehusha, I know Yehua told Yehusha the son of Nun, now that's uh, the one they call Joshua. In chapter one, it says, do not let this book of the Torah depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you guard to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your, your way prosperous and act wisely. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, nor be discouraged. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is with you wherever you go. Now, that's very important, see? Be strong and courageous and, and just stand, you know. Sometimes all, that's all we can do is just stand. So why is there constant pressure? Because Yahusha's body is being persecuted. Acts 9 says, but Shaul, still breathing threats and murder against the taught ones of the master, having come to the high priest, asked from him letters to the congregations of Damascus, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, to bring them bound to Jerusalem. 
And it came to be that as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly a light flashed around him from the heaven, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice speaking to him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, master? And the master said, I am Yahusha, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the prods. So here we have a, another verse. Now, it says in Revelation 12, verse 17, And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, who would be those guarding the commands of Elohim and possessing the witness of Yahusha HaMashiach. So it's Yahusha in us that's being persecuted. So anti-Messiahs are in the world. First John, or First Yahukanan 4 says, you are of Elohim, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of Elohim, the one knowing Elohim hears us. He, is not, he who is not of Elohim does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of the truth and the spirit of the delusion. Beloved ones, let us love one another because love is of Elohim. And everyone who loves has been born of Elohim and knows Elohim. The one who does not love does not know Elohim, for Elohim is love. Isn't that remarkable? Now, persecution is also a type of friction. It's, you know, agitation. And it results between different worldviews. If there's, if there's friction, then there's going to be smoke, you know. It's, it is resistance, and that's what it is. The more powerful of any set of worldviews the more powerful of two worldviews naturally seeks the elimination of all others. So if, if somebody has a philosophy and they want to implement that, like in, in uh, communist uh, China, they're, they're more powerful. The dragon has given them authority. And so they're persecuting all other points of view. And they seek the elimination of all others. They compete for dominance. Now the creator, Yahuwah, has chosen his offspring. Here are 11 verses that reveal how it will all end. Yeshiyahu 61, starting at verse 1. The spirit of the master Yahuwah is upon me, because Yahuwah has appointed me to bring good news to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim release to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yahuwah and the day of vengeance of our Elohim, to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto those who mourn in Sion, to give them embellishment for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And they shall be called trees of righteousness, a planting of Yahuwah to be adorned. And remember in, I think it's chapter 5 of Matthew, or Matthew Yahusha on the, on the mount said, uh, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the reign of the heavens. And that's an amazing thing. And they shall rebuild the old ruins and raise up the former wastes. And they shall restore the ruined cities and the waste of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed the, your flocks. And the sons of the foreigner be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be called priests of Yahuwah. Servants of our Elohim shall be said of you. You shall consume the strength of the Gentiles and boast in their esteem. Instead of your shame and reproach, they rejoice a second time in their portion. Therefore, they take possession a second time in their land. Everlasting joy is theirs. For I, Yahuwah, love right ruling. I hate robbery for burnt offering. And I shall give their reward in truth and make an everlasting covenant with them. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them, and that they are the seed Yahuwah has blessed. I greatly rejoice in Yahuwah, my being exults in my Elohim, for he has put garments of deliverance on me. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks her, himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, 
and the garden causes the seed to shoot up, so the master Yahuwah causes righteousness and praise to shoot up before all the nations. So Yahushua told us to watch for something. He said in Matthew 24, and learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and it puts forth leaves, you know that the summer is near. So you also, when you see all these, know that he is near at the doors. Truly I say to you, this generation shall by no means pass away until all this takes place. And the heaven and the earth shall pass away, but my word shall not by no means pass away. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the messengers of the heavens, but my father only. And as the days of Noah, so also shall be the coming of the son of Adam be. And it says in the book of Acts that I think Kepha was proclaiming this to the people that were hearing him. And he said that Yahushua must remain away in, you know, in the heavens until the restoration of all things. Now we're persecuted for righteousness sake. You know, that's an interesting thing. When we're righteous and we, we plead with people to, to, to remember that, that his name and his word are above all. In Matthew 5, it says, Blessed are those persecuted for righteousness' sake, because theirs is the reign of the heavens. Blessed are you when they reproach and persecute you and falsely say every wicked word against you for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, because your reward in the heavens is great. For in this way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now, the greatest persecutor of all time is, of course, the adversary, the dragon. Hashatan, we call him, the, the adversary. That's what Shatan means. It means an adversary, an enemy. And in First Chronicles 21, it says, And Satan stood up against Yisrael and moved Daud to number Yisrael. That's the first time that his, his name or his title is given in the scriptures. Satan stood up against Yisrael and moved Daud or David to number Israel. Betrayers and persecutors need to be noted. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, we're supposed to note the one that's doing persecution and causing division and uh, factions and things like that. This charge I entrust to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you might wage the good campaign, having belief and a good conscience, which some have thrust aside and suffered shipwreck concerning their belief. Among these are Humaneos and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan in order to be taught not to blaspheme. Take notice of those who are disobedient, but love them still. 2 Thessalonians 3, 14 says, And if anyone does not obey our word in this letter, note that one and do not keep company with him so that he is put to shame. However, do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. And then in 1 Thessalonians 5, 11 through 15, it says, Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, as indeed you do. But brothers, we beg you to know those who labor among you and are over you in the master and admonish you and hold to them in the highest regard and love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we appeal to you, brothers, warn those who are disorderly, encourage the faint-hearted, Uphold the weak and be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. And you were bought with a price. And interestingly enough, when, uh, when Yosef was in Mitzrayim and his brothers were discovered who he, who he was, he revealed himself, then he sent them on their way to go back and he loaded their wagons up and he sent money and, uh, well, not money, but uh, food and provisions in order for them to return with their, with their father. And uh, interesting enough, he said something very interesting. He said, uh, he says, do not quarrel on the journey. And that's where we are. We're, we're, sometimes we see ourselves fighting and, and disputing and slandering one another because somebody doesn't do this right. They're not using the right letters or... They're, they're teaching you, uh, you're not circumcising yourselves or whatever. Well, you see in Genesis 45, 24, 
Yosef was a figure of the Messiah in that instance. And he says, do not quarrel with one another on the way. See, because they're going back to get their father and they're gonna have to explain to their father that Yosef is alive. <laughs> and they're gonna go, now how are we gonna manage this? That he's alive, we're gonna have to admit what we did. The purpose though of the persecution in that case was actually good. And that's the thing about persecution. It actually helps you. It strengthens you. So, uh, but you know, we have to remember though that persecution is uh, a cost that we pay. Notice the ending line of the Song of Moshe. Here's the ending line. Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. O nations, acclaim his people, for he avenges the blood of his servants and returns vengeance to his adversaries and shall pardon his land, his people. The giants that we wrestle with are many strongholds of false teachings, for the most part, and they're adopted from pagan worship. And when we expose them, we become openly attacked. But we defend the name and the Torah of the living Elohim. Now, overcoming evil is mentioned in one of my favorite chapters, Romans 12. Romans 12 is a chapter that is a picture of the way that we behave. Now, starting in verse, 20, uh, verse 1, I call upon you, therefore, brothers, through the compassion of Elohim, to present your bodies a living offering, set apart, well-pleasing to Elohim, your reasonable worship. Worship means service, uh, serving, obeying. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. For I say through the favor which has been given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he should, but to think soberly, as Elohim has given to each a measure of belief. For as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function. So we, the many, are one body in Messiah, and members each one of one another. Now, having different gifts, According to the favor which was given to us, let us use them accordingly, if prophecy according to the proportion of belief, if serving in the serving, or he who is teaching in the teaching, or he who encourages in the encouragement, or he who is sharing in sincerity, he who is leading in diligence, he who shows compassion joyously. Let love be without hypocrisy. Shrink from what is wicked, cling to what is good. In brotherly love, tenderly loving towards one another in appreciation, giving preference to each other, not idle in duty, ardent in spirit, serving the master, rejoicing in the expectancy, and enduring under pressure, continuing steadfastly in prayer, imparting to the needs of the set-apart ones, and pursuing kindness towards strangers. But, and bless those who persecute you. Bless, and do not curse, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be proud in mind, but go along with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Repay no one evil for evil. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, on your part, be at peace with all men. Beloved, do not revenge yourselves, but give place to the wrath. For it has been written, vengeance is mine. I shall repay, says Yahuwah. Instead, if your enemy hungers, feed him. If he thirsts, give him a drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now that's Romans 12, 21 verses. They're awesome. Now, it says it again in verse 17 of Romans 12, repay no one evil for evil. Okay, in John 15, 12, I like to use a lot of scripture because that's where the real power is. You know what I mean? This is my command that you love one another as I have loved you. No one is, has greater love than this, that one should lay down his life for his friends. And in 1 John 4, 9, 11, 9 through 11, by this, the love of Elohim was manifested in us that Elohim has sent his only brought forth son into the world in order that we might live through him. And in this is love, 
Not that we loved Elohim, but he loved us and sent his beloved, his son, beloved ones. If Elohim so loved us, we ought to love, we also ought to love one another. Now, we aren't enduring anything like this yet. Some people have, they've, they've had to die, but he suffered this torture to save us. So here is how we are enabled to overcome all evil. I am with you. If he is with you, then you can endure it to the end. And that to the end part means to the death. Moshe tells Yisrael before entering the land, be strong and courageous, do not fear. Yahuwah used the word fear not so many times. I think there's over 360 incidences where the words fear not are used. Do not fear, nor be afraid of them. For it is Yahuwah your Elohim who is going with you. He does not fail you nor forsake you. Genesis 28, 15 says, And see, I am with you and shall guard you wherever you go and shall bring you back to this land. For I am not going to leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Now, remember, we're in the distant isles of the, of the world right now. We're in the distant parts of the earth where he scattered us. And we're all waking up to his covenant, we're at like, just like he said in Deuteronomy chapter 4. In Daniel 3, we see this. He was, he was persecuted too. Remember Daniel? Thereupon, because the sovereign's order was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire killed those men who brought up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound, bound into the midst of the burning furnace of fire. Then the sovereign, Nebuchadnezzar, was amazed and stood up in haste and spoke and said to his counselors, Did we not throw three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the sovereign, Certainly, O, o sovereign. He answered and said, Look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. Yeah, and they are not hurt. And the, fourth of, and the form of the fourth is like the son of Elah. I am with you. They said, even if we do die in the fire, we will not bow down to your image. First Peter 4 says, beloved ones, do not be surprised at the fiery trial that is coming upon you to try you as though some unusual matter has befallen you. But as you share Messiah's sufferings, rejoice in order that you might rejoice exultingly at the revelation of his esteem. Now that's when he returns. At some point though, the, the United Nations is gonna gain authority over all the nations. And the dragon will begin a full on assault to destroy all that oppose its humanist agenda. And here's a, a picture of uh, Benedict the 16th calling for, in his own words, interventions in the form of collective action by the international community. Uh-oh. <laughs> Here's some pictures of some strange buildings of the UN. This is in Bonn, Germany. It looks like an obelisk, doesn't it? That was like the Babylonian thing. And here's the, the uh, United Religions Initiative logo from the United Nations. And of course, the, the, the wreath around the world is actually a symbol of universal authority of Caesar which basically he is the Caesar of the world. And uh, there's a picture of the UN General Assembly Hall, which looks like it has a big crux. Those are really screens in there, but it looks like some kind of a solar crux. And the UN building itself is some, some sort of an obelisk. And they called this object in the movie 2001, A Space Odyssey, an obelisk. And it looked just like that, you know. So the secret covenant of protection is a secret, you know. Now that's uh, very interesting because look at this. In, in Psalm 25, starting at verse 8, good and straight is Yahuwah. Therefore, he teaches sinners in the way. Well, we're not supposed to teach people that are not sinning. We're supposed to teach people that are sinners. He guides the meek in right ruling, and he teaches the meek ones his way. All the paths of Yahuwah are kindness and truth to those who guard his covenant and his witnesses. For your name's sake, O Yahuwah, you shall pardon my crookedness, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears Yahuwah? 
He teaches him in the way he should choose. His life dwells in good, and his seed inherits the earth. The secret of Yahuwah is with those who fear him, and he makes his covenant known to him, to them. Now, in other words, if you fear him, he will make his covenant known to you. See, otherwise you're not going to know what his covenant really is. My eyes are ever toward Yahuwah, for he brings my feet out of the net. Turn your face to me and show me favor, for I am lonely and afflicted. The distresses of my heart have enlarged. Oh, bring me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and my toil and forgive all my sins. See how many my enemies have become, and they hate me with a violent hatred. Oh, guard my life and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I have taken refuge in you. Let integrity and straightness guard me, for I have waited for you. Redeem Yisrael, O Elohim, out of all his distresses. And you can also read Psalm 91 when you're feeling like you're being persecuted. Now when we pray, we are wearing the armor of Elohim. When we pray for our persecutors, then our own heart changes towards them. And it actually feels cleansing. Because if you've got hatred in your heart, then you're enslaved by that. If you hate someone, you're their slave. Because you're consumed by all, all, all your thoughts are focused on that. But if you pray for them, then they will no, no longer be your masters. Hatred is a terrible thing to have mastering you. Love must be the master of our hearts. Ephesians 6.13 says, Because of this, take up the complete armor of Elohim so that you have power to withstand in the wicked day and having done all to stand. Now that's very important because that's all we really have to do is just stand because Yahuwah is fighting our battles. And remember that we're here commissioned to guard two main things, his word and his name. The name of Yahuwah and the word of Yahuwah, the Torah. I bow myself towards your set-apart heckle, that means temple, and give thanks to your name for your kindness and for your truth, for you have made great your word, your name above all. There's a pain within me, a longing for your name to be heard on my family's lips. Can you hear me grieving? Yahusha, hear my cry. Send your light and your power. Shed the scales from their eyes. Cause we all walk each day in a dark and fallen world. And our hearts ache. It feels they'll ring. Apart. But who am I to them? My words mean nothing at best. Oh, Yahuwah, grant me wisdom and the strength to pass these tales. Oh, show me how to love through persecution. Teach me how to walk. Like you, cause I need you, Yahusha, to help me hold on to your joy. I offer up to you the pain, and I will not complain, cause you endured such torture for my love. So help me be sensitive to what you do And see persecution through the eyes of you It's a shame, all this fighting Cause love's our only aim And childishness, it needs to go from our midst Yahusha needs his body to iron out what's wrong putting on bridal behavior and then work together strong 
Cause when we hate, hate our brothers, it's Yahusha we hate. Cause he's in us, all his Nazarene. So to persecute us is to persecute him too. And the fruit of love identifies the tree that it flows through. So show me how to love through persecution. Teach me how to walk like you. Cause I need you, Yahusha, to help me hold on to your joy I offer up to you this pain and I will not complain cause you endure such torture for my love so help me be sensitive to what you do and see persecution through the eyes of you pierce me with your words shatter me with your love and leave me breathless in your presence pierce me with your words shatter me with your love and cleanse my heart with your Torah are words from the heart that can't be spoken the crushing anguish for those in despair or oh, tears are words to Yahusha's heart broken because to him we can cast every care so show me how, show me how, show me how, oh show me how, I've chosen now to love through persecution, I've chosen now to walk like you. But I need you, Yahusha, to help me hold on to your joy. I offer up to you the pain, and I will not complain, cause you endured such torture for my love. So help me be sensitive to what you do and see persecution through the eyes of you so help me be sensitive to what you do and see persecution through the eyes of you Shalom, brothers and sisters. Bye-bye.